What's up, everybody? Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I was about to say happy Monday. I hope you had a great long weekend. A nice Valentine's Day weekend. Family Day weekend. I spent my weekend with food poisoning. Imagine that. Not a good weekend at all. All right, guys. So we're going to talk about everything that's happening in the market today. So let's get right into it. We got a bunch of ticker requests. We got lots of things happening in the market. Futures are down. Futures are down because of Apple. Apple is the first U.S. company to say it won't meet its revenue projections for the current quarter due to the coronavirus outbreak. So, I mean, that obviously had a ripple effect across equities across the board in futures market pointed down, but not a lot. I mean, it's, it's what is it, Zero, 12 points now, right? Not significant. Anytime we've seen this, we've seen the dip get bought. It's kind of like, you know, Apple's coming out and saying this, but you already knew this. I mean, this is what you would have anticipated. So initial bearish reaction. And then let's see if the algos turn it up like they have. In every case, we've got a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders currently taking place here in the pre-market. So we're looking potentially for a move back up. And can we watch the Kumo cloud here on the 15 minute? Oil slipped below $52 a barrel, pressured by concerns over the coronavirus impact on oil demand and lack of any further action by OPEC and its allies to support the market. Walmart missed earnings Q4, adjusted EPS $1.38. They hit, it was $1.38. Estimates were $1.44. Uh, what else we got going on here? Tesla in advanced stages of talks to use batteries from CATL that contain no cobalt. One of the most expensive EV battery metals in cars made at Shanghai, uh, made in Shanghai. Adoption would mark the first time the U.S. automaker would include lithium iron phosphate LFP batteries in its lineup. Lots of stuff with Tesla today. We'll get back to that. Apple, J.P. Morgan, uh, thoughts on Apple's pre-announcements. J.P. Morgan analysts reiterate an overweight rating and 350 price target on Apple and remains bullish. And Apple's slight dip buying currently taking place right now. Tesla I had this had this trade strategy on Friday for a strangle. 820 to 780 was priced so perfectly. Didn't take it because of all the focus and attention I had on space. And here we go. Tesla starting to move in the pre-market. What are we trading at right now? I think we just hit 840, back to 840, 838 now. So Tesla bear Morgan Stanley raises its bull case to 1200 a share. So we're going to be looking for a move on Tesla now. Uh, in MJ world, Canopy River, CIBC cuts price target to 425 from 450. CGC, CIBC raises price target to 35 from 30. CGC wasn't seeing much of a reaction to that in the pre market. It's down a little bit, 49,000 shares. And Canaccord uh, raises CGC's price target from 28. Sorry, 228 from 25. Valens starting to export international white label products to Australia. Remember last week we were thinking that balance was being added to the ETF. They've never made it so easy as they made it this time. It was just Credit Suisse doing all the buying and actually reflected share per share. So it's never that easy, the ETF. It doesn't really, you know, we've seen ITG, we've seen National, we've seen Balance. Now we see Credit Suisse, but Credit Suisse was so clear this time. That's a gift. I doubt it'll be that easy again. CGC Stifle raises price target to 35 from 30. I'm surprised we're seeing all these price targets and getting a lack of momentum on CGC right now in the pre-market. I understand because the futures are down. That's going to impact it, but still very surprising. What else we got going on here? Morgan Stanley and Brian Stein gave price targets today on Tesla. And they were the most bearish institutions on Tesla. And they both increased their targets. So that's what's up today. That's what's up today in the pre-market action. So let's get to the ticker requests. And we've got a whole bunch. We've got Starbucks, Roku, LK, MDT, Beyond, Space, Maxar, VFF, Balance, Apple, Netflix, Snap, Tesla. Let's talk about space. 
what are we missing here? I know there's going to be some more that roll in. All right, let's get into it. First ticker we're going to talk about is CGC. Let's just get to CGC here. And then we'll go over and check out Tesla and space. And then we'll go from there. So CGC, we know we had the, you know, nice gap up open, bear candlestick. You don't, you don't really want this kind of a candlestick. Maybe if we had a doji, you know, maybe if we had a nice lower wick showing the bulls buying the dip. This was a complete fade essentially on Friday. So we knew we would run into resistance in the zone. Like we're not just going to fly over the zone. We knew we'd run into the resistance, but I don't like how much it gave back. The fact that it gave back this much, we're looking for one of two things. We're looking for an inside bar today. I would be very surprised if we're gonna give that much. And then today we come up and break 2330, considering we're opening up over here at 2190. I mean, it's not it's not completely impossible. Where are we? 2190 would bring this over here right about this range so that would be a you know 10 percent move not completely impossible but i would say unlikely we're looking for an inside bar today if we can hold our low so we don't want to lose the low of friday 2164 if we lose the low of friday we're looking at a gap fill simply plainly put we're going to be looking at a full gap fill and you know people aren't going to like that but that's the nature of the business right we're going to be looking down at 2044 for a complete gap fill watch the eight exponential it's curling up. We know we're gonna come in and test it. So that gap fill is between 2172, apologies, and 2044. So we're gonna be looking for a complete gap fill. If we lose the low, eight exponential, we'll see if we can bounce it. I imagine we're likely going to see an inside bar and then trade sideways for a couple of days and then we'll have a nice clear breakout or breakdown on this chart. That's what I'm gonna be watching on CGC. Space is absolutely in space here in the pre-market, right? So essentially, if we look at this here, I think we're struggling at this 33 level. So basically we're almost having a triple top up over here at this 3305 level. So it looks like we're struggling in that range. We'll see what happens closer to the bell. Generally in this case, as we get closer to the bell, we start to fade a little bit. If we look at where we closed on, where we closed on Friday, what is this now? 12% gap up open. This is right now 12%. It's starting to fade a little bit here. It was at 14%. So it's a big open coming. If this holds, we still got an hour, of course. Um, 7.30, profit takers started to come in. The 8 o'clock candle came in and still holding this gains. It's really struggling up over here at this 3305 range. So if we don't break that, I'm going to assume some more profit takers coming in that are trading shares in the pre-market. If you're in options, you're going to have to wait a couple of minutes today at the bell. It's not going to be available likely until about 9.32, 9.33, considering how crazy the open would be if we open up in this range. So... I mean, we're looking at the FIB extension and we're right here at the 200 percentile, right? We're right here, almost to the penny, 33.19. We hit 33.05. That's a target. And then the other target I'm watching is 38.62. That would be an extreme move. This is very similar. So if we open up over here, think about where the gap up open is going to be. If we hold this, still so much time. Okay, I don't think we're going to hold it personally. I think we'll come back to the low 32s, mid 31s. If we do hold, if we do hold this range, Wow, what a gift, right, for Tuesday morning. You, you get payday already on Tuesday. So if we do hold this range, after this type of candlestick, this much of a gap up, I would be concerned about the spinning top candlestick today, shooting star candlestick, and potential top being in. Top meaning similar to what we see in Tesla. So we're going to just look at the Tesla chart. We saw that here, similar candlestick, and then look at the gap right? Very similar. Had a run, had a continuation move on that day. And then eventually was a spending top candlestick. Remember this happened right at the end of the day. Okay. Didn't happen at 9, 8, 9.30 AM. It happened at 3.45. It was the last candlestick of the day that caused that huge move to the downside. So yeah, I mean, you got previous historical contacts from another ticker that just went parabolic that you have another one right now that's going parabolic. So it's giving you some good guidance and some good psychology of how to trade this type of a scenario you're seeing a gap up you have a couple of strategies you could use right now with with space one is you take your money and go you say hey man listen i'm getting a 10 percent gap up open i'm gonna put that money in my pocket i'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my day the other school of thought is you take half you take half you let the other half run and you let the first 15 minutes of the day really you know we don't Sorry, dwindle out all the profit takers, all the people trying to get in. And you see once the smoke settles, the dust settles after the first 15 minutes, where are we in the chart? 
And if it's still healthy, we're going to look for more continuation today. And then potentially we look for an afternoon sell-off. That's potential. Very unlikely that the sell-off doesn't come today. Very unlikely. I would say that's the least likely scenario with a 10 to 12% gap up open. Least likely scenario, but we can absolutely see something that goes parabolic. Let's use one of our other recent parabolic charts for an example here. So we saw beyond this here. And beyond didn't really have something similar. Like it had nice moves up, then it had gap. Big spinning top had another gap. Big spinning top and then pulled back. I mean, over here, this was a very different chart, right? Okay, here we go. Here's an example, right? Bullish Marabuzo, bullish kicker candlestick. Then you have the gap up and then the top. I mean, it's, not as, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close at that point in the chart. So that's something we could be looking for today in space. One thing people struggle with is that once they sell, they immediately want to get back into the position, right? So you got to have your game plan right now because what happens is you're going to sell. And when you sell, you're going to immediately want to go back in. And then if it continues to run on you, if it continues to run on you, you're going to end up chasing it and then you're going to end up buying the top. And then once you buy the top and there's a blow off top, you're going to give back so much gains and you're going to be in a negative position. Then you're going to freeze and then you're going to hold and then you're going to watch this beautiful trade unravel on you and you panic in a bad position so don't let that happen to you today don't chase it you're either letting it go letting some run keeping 50 percent of your position to remove the fomo you take 50 percent off to you know take care of the greed aspect of your trading 50 percent to let it run to remove the fomo until it loses the 15 minute eight exponential it's going to be very far from the 15 minute eight exponential to start so you can use it on extended hours. That's an opportunity for you to do. Whatever you do when you sell, you want to be patient on a re-entry, which might mean you have to buy it back in higher later on. Once you see the hourly eight exponential catch up and we have an hourly higher low, you might have to buy back in higher. Last thing you want to do today is get this beautiful gap up open 10, 12% potential sell chase buy for a 20% blow off top and being stuck in that position. Do not let that happen to you. It will absolutely ruin your day, your week, and it's going to be hard to get over a situation like that. So let's move on and talk about Tesla. So Tesla, this 820 level was the key level we needed to break. That was the key level we needed to break. And if we look at what's happening here in extended hours, we've broken that level. Now in extended hours, we have a little bit of a tweezer top. I was looking at this for a strangle on Friday. 820 to 730 they were both priced at 14 bucks the implied volatility had significantly dropped so it was a gift unfortunately didn't take it but looking at the scenario now um, we, we're going to be looking for some more upside okay so we will be looking for some more upside but it's one of those scenarios where you got to make sure you got to make sure in the first 15 minutes of the day you got a nice uptrend intact you want to see that algo on holding the 15 minute eight exponential and then you can let the trade go as of right now we have tweezer tops in the pre-market on the hourly at 8.59 so you're going to be watching that 8.59 level as we get closer to the bell and if we approach that today so nice move here we're consolidating volume decent consolidation taking place right now decent so we're going to want to see a curl and hold this 15 minute eight exponential Starbucks, let's check it out. Today's gonna be a Starbucks day for sure. Okay, so what do I got going on on this chart? I'm not quite sure why I have this line here, but let me just double check. Was this an hourly type of resistance here? Okay, right over here. So support, that's what I was looking at, I guess. There's some, some history here on this line, so. I mean, it's not, it's not too visible, but looking at it right now. So let's check out Starbucks here. We closed at 89.30 and where are we trading at right now? So 88.55. So we're a little bit down today in the pre-market and consolidation happening. So we saw a nice move to the upside. We're looking for a potential gap fill. Okay, now I understand. We're looking for a gap fill and we're going to see if this area was going to act as resistance. It almost did. It almost did. So we've got an inside bar. We're looking for a little bit of a lower open today. And since we're trading at 88.50, we're going to be back testing the 8 exponential right away. You can kind of say, is this going to be a potential bull flag? Could be if we see a nice lower wick today and we start to have a little bit of a falling channel on this chart. So something that looks like this and then we hold within this channel. If we fall out of the channel, then it's not a bull flag. So we'll be looking at it from this perspective. It is it is a decent pull. The volume isn't really 
signifying too much of a bull flag, but you can still look at the shape of the pattern to take place because if the pattern is still there, people will play it. I don't love it because we don't have the huge bull volume and the really decreasing bear volume but if we could stay in this channel then we could start looking for a move up and look for a complete gap fill 8850 is going to be right near the 8 exponential and the kumo cloud you can see the kumo cloud the bottom portion held as support we broke up over it now if we come and get a back test we're going to want to see a curl back to the upside on starbucks all right let's check out roku here And let me just check something out here, guys. All right, let's check out Roku here. So Roku, this level has been very notable, this 127.40. Let me see what Roku is doing right now in the pre-market. It's pretty much flat right now in the pre-market. So it's one of those scenarios where you could be looking at this as a nice bottom fishing play. If we if we look at this chart here, you can see all the relationship it's had at this level. So originally it was acting as resistance, okay? Then it came in as support, it came in as support over here, and then once we lost it, we significantly dumped. We came back to it, acted as support. Again, over here, once we lost it, it acted as a little bit of resistance. Support, 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 support. We got choppy here in the channel, so we, we had a little bit of relationship here, support, resistance, and then boom, a perfect wick. That's the line in the sand, it seems, for Roku, this 127.40. So one of the options you could be doing right now is saying, hey, I'm gonna go bull here, and I'm gonna place my stop at 127.40, and if this 127.40 breaks, then what you're doing is looking at that to become resistance, and then looking for a back test, Top fish it, boom, and look for a resistance break on the downside. As of right now, whatever it does is still going to be a bear flag on the hourly, okay? So it's still gonna be a bear flag. Looking at this here, let me just remove these so we don't get too confused. We're gonna be looking at a bear flag because we already have an upper wick. We already have another upper wick. Let's see what that looks like with extended hours on. Okay, not much. So we're gonna be looking for something that looks like this, right? So you have your pull, you have your wick. This is big bear volume for a push to the downside and a little bull volume. Kumo cloud and eight exponential will be your guide. If it can break back up over the Kumo cloud, then it's gonna negate the bear flag and get up over the eight exponential. And then you're gonna to wanna to see the eight exponential curl to the upside. LK, so I know a couple of people told me to look at this chart. Uh, yesterday and I actually forgot and didn't get a chance to go look at it. So we're looking at this chart right now and it's very tight. Wow, 3802, very tight. Let me see what it's doing here in the pre-market. And it's trading at 3770, so slightly down, nothing too significant. Looks like there was a little bit of a gap there that already filled. Google Cloud right here, so we could potentially, it's bouncing off at the eight exponential. It's just bull volume right now. We have a clear top over here at 39.19, and then after 30.19, 40.24, and then boom, this was a significant drop down, so we have a lot of room to the upside. Held the Kumo Cloud, held the Kumo Cloud, held the Kumo Cloud again, and we can see if the Kumo Cloud is gonna potentially guide us to the upside. What we need here is to see a spike in bull volume. Earnings are coming up on February 26th, so next week, we know February 26th earnings are going to be a little bit cautious due to guidance, right? I mean, they've had to close a lot of shops, coronavirus, all this stuff. So we know I wouldn't want to be playing it into earnings. But as of right now, 39.19, triple top here, nothing but dojis. It's an inside bar inside of an inside bar. So we could be looking for a nice break on this chart, either coming today or tomorrow. Okay, we're 37.70 here on hourly. So let's just take a look at this here. And I realized I didn't shut off the comments on YouTube. Apologies, guys. So if I do have time, because I didn't shut them off, I will answer those questions. So we're looking pretty tight here, guys. So let me just double check this here. Let's look at this from a line chart perspective. You can see here, we're very tight. So it looks like a break is coming, potentially today. Ah, it's coming today for sure. So a big break is coming. It could go to this afternoon at 1.30, 3.30 max, but it looks like we're going to get a break early this morning. So watch out for a nice impulsive break here coming on LK. 39.19, that's the key riz we need to break. And bulls want to essentially hold at 37.16. And then you have a little bit of support at 36.30. 
36. So watch out for a nice break coming today on LK. MBT. Medtronic PLC. So what kind of company is this? Let's check this out here. A lot of shares. Big market cap. So this is a big company here. MDT. So this chart is at all time highs. So let's double check this here. It is an all-time high chart, so absolutely been ripping, like a lot of names. Big lower wick spinning top candlestick yesterday, bull, uh, last week, bulls bought the dip last week. You could say you potentially got a bear flag shaping up here. Potentially, well, this is a nice bull candlestick here, but until it gets over the eight exponential, you can still make an argument case for it. Earnings are today. I don't know if earnings were in the pre-market or after hours, but we're going to be able to find out right here. Let's look at this. We closed at 117.13, and it looks like earnings were in the pre-market. And we're seeing a bear reaction to earnings. So the fact that you are seeing a bear reaction to earnings, you're going to start looking at what supports do you have? Is the support still in play? 114. Kumo Cloud is going to be right over here at this 115 level, but it looks like potentially you're already going to open up below it. LBB will be curling down to the downside. I'd be watching the Kumo Cloud in that 112 range. After that, what support do you have? You got some support right over there at 112.15 as well. So double check. It looks like earnings already came out and starting to see a slight bear reaction. I could be wrong. It could be just normal uh, pre market action due to futures market. But from a bull perspective, it's starting to look a little bit bare. I mean, we've lost the trend here. We're seeing a bounce. It's just a short-term bounce until it gets up over the eight exponential and closes up over the eight exponential. It is just a bounce for now. Let's move on. Check out Beyond. All right, Beyond, yeah, looking pretty interesting to me. I mean, if we look at this here, look at the volume completely dropping off on this name. So we're going to be looking for a spike in volume earnings coming up next week okay so we're going to be watching out for that upper trend line that's been pushing us down i mean if you look at this from the line chart you can see it's perfectly that close we need to get a close over this line chart right now that's what we're going to be watching and we got a little bit of a curl now when we're coming up we're looking to see where we're going to set this lower high right so if we run a fib from our last move here from our low to our high we bounce uh, 0.5 now we're looking at this in reverse we're going to be looking to see where we're going to bounce to. The bounce is already pretty good. We're at the 0.5. We want to get at least to the GP 118, 119. If we could get to 118, 119 and close there, we'll close over this trend line and the chart will start looking pretty good again. I mean, beyond that, looking bad. We're really just looking for a spike in volume to give some clear direction because these moves that we've seen recently, okay, they've been fake outs. And how do you measure a fake out is there's no volume. There's no volume to move. So when you see a chart that's moving on a lack of volume and you get really excited, you have to remember that if anybody takes profit from the, the buys that are coming in, it's going to push it back down because there's no sustained buyers. If there's no sustained buyers, the chart's not going to continue to go up. So you need the big volume. As of right now, the volume is completely dropping off. So we need to see the big spike in volume to really be excited of a breakout. This upper trend line, we want to close above it. 111 is our support and our short term resistance or our lower high here on this chart is at 123.10. So 111 to 123.10, potentially we could be looking for an equilibrium within this range. Space we already did, Maxar. Let's check out Maxar here. What is Space doing right now? So 3216, 3230. Okay, so Maxar right now, beautiful, beautiful, no fill of the gap. Okay, we got this upper trend line that we know has been essentially coming from our all time high that's been pushing this chart down. So if we look at this here, we could see, let's go to our all time high. We look at this from a line chart perspective see that been pushing us down so we need to get a close up over it we haven't been able to get a close up over it and we tried again on friday and we got a wick and we closed below it so a little bit of a spinning top candlestick potentially we could be looking for an inside bar today we close at 1914 let me see where we're trading at right now 1940 so potentially it wants to go and if it gets a close over that trend line that is a notable break on the chart so if we could get a close over friday's high 1993 this chart's going to be looking to get that breakout the sustained breakout so our top is 1993 we came down it's a spinning top candlestick 1847 potentially we could be looking for an inside bar it's going to open up in 1940 right about here right about here so we want to see a break of 1993 if we do break that there's a lack of resistance on this chart until 2145 i mean maxo is looking really good i was getting ready to enter here on the geth fill unfortunately i missed that 
Now I'll have to evaluate this chart again. But as of right now, if we get a close over this trend line, it's a notable break on the chart. Earnings are coming up as well. So let's find out, like, what are we anticipating on earnings here? Volume is not really there, but if we do get a nice move, we could be looking for a big spike in volume. All right, let's move on. What do we got going on here? Max are VFF, Valens, Apple, Netflix. Okay, let's check out VFF here. And VFF, looked like it had some action on the ETF as well. I didn't actually go in and confirm those numbers but it looks like pretty much a flat open as of right now so beautiful respect of the still falling wedge right every time we back tested it we bounce we back tested it we bounce I, we got a nice close over the exponential the volume but it's all etf related right so i know people get excited when the etf comes in they do the buying but don't forget once the etf stops buying you need new buyers you need sustainability. You need people that still want to push this and not people looking for profit taking when they don't get the continuation on the move the following day. So today is the following day. Valence Labs, VFF, for example. If we do not see the gap up, the run, the continuation, the five minute uptrend, 15 minute uptrend to start the day, anybody that was swinging from Friday starts to take its profits. And when they start to take their profits and there's no buyers, we start to get back the entire move. So that's one of the things you have to consider. Right now, if you're watching Balance, VFF, Labs, you don't want to lose the 15 minute eight exponential uptrend. You don't want to lose that level. Okay, if you lose it and you have no more buyers, we're going to fade and we're going to lose the recent move. Don't forget, last time ETF was buying, labs they mark the top on laps that 547 level so as of right now similar vff it's getting a move this volume is not organic volume it's not hey look vffs so everyone wants it it's breaking out this is etf volume now so it doesn't it really doesn't matter it mattered for the move on friday so now to get continuation we need to see some more buyers coming in this 580 level is the key level we're going to need to break up over and then we'll start watching the Kumo Cloud, which would be in that $6 range. So as of right now, never get too excited about when the ETF buys. We want to see organic price action come in today. 15 minute, eight exponential. Let's watch it. Let's look at this right now. So that's the level. You can see that we're holding it. We're holding it right now. We're going to come back down when we back test it. We want to hold it and continue in the uptrend. All right, Valens. Balance is the same thing. I mean, it's the same exact scenario as uh, VFF. However, Valence is in a better chart position. Okay, because if you look at Valence weekly chart here, so we had the uptrend, we came back, we lost this higher low. Okay, we lost this higher low, but we haven't made a we haven't made a lower high and lower low to lose completely the weekly uptrend. So as of right now, weekly support is down at 315. Weekly resistance is up over here at 407. So we could potentially be looking at a weekly equilibrium. You look at the Kumo cloud, we close right there, right? So if we could get a weekly close above the Kumo cloud, that would be pretty good. We want to close over that 380 range this week and then look for that test of 407. Nice candlestick, volume, it's all ETF. It's, it's all that matters. It's credit suisse, buying it, you know, pushing it up. As of right now, Valence is saying it's a little bit of lower open. See if that's going to hold. It looks like it's going to be a slightly lower open, not as significant as it's showing right now. Looking at this chart, our next resistance we have to watch is 379. I'm going to anticipate we don't break that level. We're going to be looking for an inside bar today. Okay. If we break 376, great. Right. If we break 376, Great, we're gonna look at that 379, it won't be an inside bar, but 379 is our resistance. If we don't break 376, today will be an inside bar type day. Volume won't be anything as similar. Unless ETF is gonna be continuing buying on Monday. Uh, we haven't seen that before though, right? And Friday was the deadline and it should be, that's it, should be, should be, right? Okay, Apple. Oh, Valens, just re reiterate, right? You're looking at 15 minute. Uh, 15 minute, eight exponential. Okay, same thing. And then if we lose it, watch the hour, the eight exponential. We're getting a little bit far from it. If you look at the Bollinger Bands, right? We're at the third deviation. So just caution, right? And if you do get continuation, you got to have your mindset at where do I take my profits? Because um, it's going to be outside the third deviation of a Bollinger Band. And it's going to be far from the eight exponential. So we know a higher low is going to come on this chart. Apple. 
So buy the dip, right? I mean, that's the way it's always been for Apple. It's, Apple has always been buy the dip. But at this point, I really want to give it some time to develop because they did come out with some bear news right before all time high. So let's see how the market price is it. <coughs> Excuse me. 318.71 is the daily support. If we lose that 318.71, we got daily support over here at 313.85. I don't imagine we're gonna break to a new all time high today. That'd be extremely shocking, right? They came out, dropped guidance, volume's been dropping off in this name. I would be looking for an equilibrium to develop on this chart three, three, between 313.85 and 327.85 all time high. So the key would be to be patient and let this range develop. You don't want to get too, you know, it's it's going to get choppy, right? You think it's, oh, no, they're buying the dip. The, the bulls are moving it back up and then it, it's choppy because the volume isn't really going to be there. I would allow for the range to really tighten. You can see the volume dropping off. They just drop guidance, one of the names to be patient on. Or if you're looking for the bear play, you could be looking for a short-term bear play, anticipating 313 holds. If 313 doesn't hold, then we're not going to get that daily equilibrium. We're going to be looking back down at 350 SMA and then potential Kumo cloud in this range. Netflix, loving Netflix. We need to get that key break on Netflix here. And that key break is going to be that 385.99. So essentially 386. That's the level we want to be watching on this chart. I'm looking for a move. If we do break that range, you know, I'm looking for an all-time high run. So something at least to start, go to 400 and then 415, 443. That's what I'm going to be watching. This is the clear top on this chart, as we can see this here. Top, okay, support, top, top, top. Again, tweezer tops over here. So that 386 is the goal signal right now. And if you're looking at it from a bear perspective, that's the top fishing play right now as well. So you would say, hey, I've placed my stop there. And if it breaks that, then I would go long on it. So Netflix right now, let me just double check what it's trading at right now, 379.25. So we're gonna be slightly down. Looking at the chart right now, eight exponential is down at 373.35. So last time we back tested, we held. So if we do lose this inside bar bearish, then we could be looking to see the reaction to 373.35 and looking for a higher low off of this chart. We've got slight daily support. We've got daily support over here at, let's get this working here. Daily support over here at 362.52. This doji candle will have an hourly support in that range at 369.72. And we'll be watching for the eight exponential to come in and act as support. But essentially 386, this top, that's the goal level on this chart. Snap. Snap on the daily. So nice bounce. Okay, so we dumped on earnings, huge dump. We saw a nice bounce. Eight exponential has been rejecting. Look at this rejection. Five rejections ever since. Doji candlestick on Friday. So we're looking at Friday's top as our short term resistance and potential we're going to get an equilibrium now between. Between. Uh, 717 and 1786. That's where I anticipate the equilibrium to come in. So between that range. So let the chart develop. Watch the 8 exponential. If you do get a close over the 8 exponential, great. So nice bounce. Higher low. Now we topped out at 1786 with a doji candlestick. Let's see where we're trading at right now in the pre-market. Right in between, 1746, right in between. So that's what I'd be watching. Potential of an equilibrium. You need to break 1786, and then you start looking back, getting back into this range. I don't know why that level is there, but that's what I'd be watching. On Snap. Tesla, we already did. Last one for the chat room is PKE, Park Aerospace Corp. All right, looking at this chart here. So it does look like we've had a little bit of an upper trend line pushing us down on this chart. Okay, let's look at this here. So it's been pushing us down basically in this range, right about there. And it does look like a little bit of a falling wedge on this chart here on the daily. So you could be watching for this little bit of a wedge, but there's still a huge amount of room 
for this to develop, right? Huge amount of room for this to develop. But that lower trend line and this upper trend line has been holding on this chart. So you could be watching out for that. So it looks like it's starting to get a little bit of that bounce. So you got your resistance right up over here. You got your support. So you're looking for a lower high compared to 1639 on this move. But let me just check if this thing's doing anything in pre-market. And it's coming up to that resistance here in the pre-market. So that's what I'd be watching on this chart. There is a falling wedge pattern. Kumo Cloud came in and acted as resistance here. Looks like we gap down on some news on this range. Each time it's broken out of the Kumo Cloud, it's immediately given it back for whatever reason. So it's extreme volatility. This has been the buy zone and this has been the sell zone. But as of right now, I'd be watching 1639. If you do break 1639, you could be looking back up at this upper trend line, which is going to take you to that 1711, 1715 range. All right, let me just see, because I left the comments on on YouTube, I will check it out. WKHS, Workhorse, oh, I remember this stock had the huge move at that one time. Looks like, getting ready, getting ready. It needs to break this 368 level. Let's see, did it break 368 today in the pre-market? And it rejected it. Did it reject it? Yeah, it rejected it this morning and then pulled back, significantly pulled back. Um, 368, that's the level it needs to break. You can see 377 as well. So it's basically almost a triple top in that range, considering here, here. It did bounce, it did break out over the Kumo Cloud. It's holding the eight exponential. Friday was a bear day. Wanna hold that eight exponential at that 329 level. That's what I'd be watching on this chart. Zoom, let's check out Zoom. And Zoom was looking pretty good here as well. I was looking at this chart last night. So obviously, big breakout. Bounce off of the 8 exponential. You can kind of say this is a bull flag here, you know, shaping up like a weekly bull flag, a three day bull flag, right? So looking like a three day bull flag. So, really nice move. You would consider with all these upper wicks that would have broke down, but look at all the lower wicks as well. So, pressure from below, buying it back up, holding the 8 exponential. A little bit of a trend line that you want to break is right there. So, you want to see a break of this chart. Actually, it's a bull pennant. So, you want to see a break of this bull pennant. So, potentially, you could get a little bit more tight in this range and then look for the breakout or the breakdown. Real. What's up, Steve? Uh, real. So, real, I mean, it's been a blue sky runner. It's been absolutely beautiful. It is an inside bar from Friday. So Friday was a little bit of a bearish day. So we have an inside bar with a bearish lean to it because we closed pretty much near the low of the day, 1550 to 15 to 1604. Let me see what real is bidding at right now. It's bidding a slightly higher 1566. So 1566, so we're watching the inside bar. 1550 holds, great. If it doesn't, then there's a tiny little gap over here and we watch the back test of the eight exponential. Okay, watch out for that tiny little gap between, between 1531 and 1542. And then we will watch for a back test of the eight exponential. It's been holding the entire way. All right, guys. Oh, there's one more, Eno. So it's a pharmaceutical company, obviously extremely volatile. How many shares does this company have? Oh, it's got 100, 100 million shares. So obviously it's been having huge reactions. I mean, this is what you see in a chart, right? You get this big move to the upside, you get the big move to the upside, and then you get to get the big sell-off. And when the big sell-off comes in, you get the big bounce, and then you either go into an equilibrium or you dump, and it dumped, and again, it gave a nice bounce. So looking at this right now, very choppy. You got your high for now marked. Let me just see if there's anything happening here in the pre-market 450 and pre-market broke. So there is something happening here. So there's a lot of action happening on this chart right now. So breaking 450, you have your new resistance up at 488. Looking at this hourly chart here, that 488 level is looking like a serious problem because you can see you have tweezers over here at 490 here in the pre-market hourly chart. You also got a little bit of a lower trend line acting as support right now that you could be watching on this chart. 
right over there acted as support. So now I would anticipate you come bounce back up and set up a lower high in this range and look for an hourly equilibrium. That's it, guys. Let's have a great day, everybody. And space is pulling back here pretty significant now. That's what happens. I didn't think it would definitely hold that range getting closer to the bell. All right, everybody. Peace.